The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we got markets in the green to kick things off, extending higher yet again. You're looking at an S&P right now, positive by half a percent, trading up almost 19 points at 4104. NASDAQ 100, we're up four tenths percent right now. You get the Dow trading up about a quarter percent, up 83 points at 32,348 in the Russell just under 1900 Russell up by nine points at 1899 Bitcoin quite a bit off of the lows we had last week look at that acceleration Friday you accelerate from about 19,000 and change up to over 21,000 this morning we're over 22,000 on Bitcoin up a thousand bucks at 22,350 ethereum catching a bid now check it out Bitcoin you're up 4.7 percent ethereum you're only up 1.3 percent 1732 for ethereum crude's catching a bid yet again so much for 81.20 we're back pushing 89 bucks in the price of crude this morning let's take a look at that crude on a daily basis uh interesting when you go back to the highs of last october 85.41 we just dip below that level we get back above that level 88.61 right now quite an acceleration over the last few days of crude back to a 15 minute chart we jump to gold we got some currency action this morning. You got gold spike into 1745. We back off a bit to 1741. We got currency action almost every day right now going on. Silver, check out that acceleration, pushing almost $20. We were at 1775 last week. You're up by 91 pennies at 1967. That's almost a 5% pop in silver versus barely a 1% pop in gold right now. And you jump to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield, but you're still talking about a 10 year yield. 3.29%. 3.29%, man. Wild stuff. Uh, as we come into a pretty important week for CPI. And guess what? Next week's a Fed meeting, man. And we'll, we get it. We get the action uh, as it continues. But CPI is going to be an important one. We'll jump into that in a moment. And then we do, we get, uh, so we get CPI tomorrow, then we get PPI on Wednesday, producer price index, right? Consumers, producers, consumers on Tuesday, producers on Wednesday. Now, producers are important, but the producer price index does not always translate into consumer prices rising, which is what matters uh, when you talk about inflation most of the time. PPI, obviously a factor that should contribute to some degree, which is why it's important. Uh, but you see things the likes of, Apple, right, comes out with their phone, new phone last week, same exact price. Well, you got to guess that Apple's producer prices are elevated, but what have they done? They've absorbed those, and the consumer prices of their phones are going to be the same. A small illustration of sometimes how those don't translate all the way through. We jump over to the VIX this morning. Uh, pretty low volatility on Friday, 2264. We're elevated a bit. Now, I tell you to pay attention to that one, folks, because not often, not often, do you have markets up half a percent, quarter percent, third of a percent? And meanwhile, you got the VIX up a solid 50 cents from where you were. And realistically, you're talking about pushing almost a dollar from where you closed out Friday's action. Elevated volatility, even with a positive market. Be careful on the open when this happens, folks. Anytime that the VIX is higher, when you have the market trading higher, there's other factors going on. And uh, I don't want to say usually, but many times... Okay, when you have a VIX elevated coming into the opening bell and you have markets in higher territory, they can give it back like nothing, man. Because what that market's saying is, hold on a second, okay, we're making pay people pay for the price of protection and premium because this market looks shaky. Market doesn't look shaky usually when you open up half a percent, unless that's really not where supply may meet demand. All right, let's jump right into the inflation conversation, man. U.S. inflation will guide Fed readying. That's the headline over at Bloomberg. Next hike, uh, economic week ahead. Yeah, as in, U.S. let me read that one more time. Inflation will guide Fed readying next hike. They're readying the next hike. It's going to guide them where they go when we get that inflation number. Now, some of the numbers they're looking for, man, for all the conversation about getting ahead of the Fed and the Fed going to pause things and, and the likes of whatnot, 
The government's report, CPI, this is talking about, is expected to show an 8% increase in the overall consumer price index from the same month last year, down from 8.5% in July. I mean, folks, we got to get to 2%, okay? You're supposed to have a pretty quick pullback from 8.5 to what? What, people, you hear the conversations, I'm sure, right? Oh, it's going to be easy to get, not easy, but people say it. It's going to be easy to get to 5%. It's going to be easy to get to maybe 4%. But boy, getting back, getting from 4 to 3 to 2 is going to be the tough one, okay? Well, folks, it's not that easy right now to get to 5 or 4 because we're talking about from 8.5 to 8 over a month. That's only half a percent. Well, that means if it comes in as expected at 8%, Okay, even if we decrease 5.5% every single month, okay, you're talking about taking 10 months just to get to 3% at that rate. I mean, you get the point. That's almost a year out and we're still not at 2%, right? And I, uh, it's supposed to be easier right now. Not sure that we're going to tick across the even half a percent dropping. Now, you get to the core side of things, though. How about expected to climb? What's going on, man? Stripping out energy and food. The CPI is forecast to climb 6.1%, up from 5.9% the year in July. Now, take a look at this chart, folks, okay? And the black is the change in CPI year over year. The pink is the core, okay? And let me try and see if I can blow it up. Perfect, I can't. The black chart here, pretty undeniable that it looks like we potentially have peaked, right? We come down from 9.1 to 8.5. Now, these are expected, okay? These are the expected numbers, 2022, and I may sneeze here. One second. Oh. Excuse me. Okay. Um, excuse me. Okay. So we get 1982. Uh, excuse me. I, I, I sneezed. It got me all combobulated. Uh, in March, we had the highest print since 1982. OK, talking about CPI. And that's when we got the core number up to 6.5 percent. OK, now you've dropped to 6.2, 6, 5.9, 5.9. They're expecting to go to 6.1. That's not supposed to happen, man. I mean, you're talking about we're going to be back at right where we were in April. It's August prices that we're talking about here on the core level. Now, energy, obviously, a huge factor in what's going on in the overall CPI, which is why you see the rise, especially in June when you got a 9.1% overall print. Okay, that's going to back down to 8.5 and potentially to 8. But the core number, man, you know, we're going to be dealing with some tough issues on crude and energy, especially coming into the winter um, for natural gas, for Europe in particular. But this core is a big problem, man. You're taking out food and energy, and we are going to have a number that's expected to be the highest number year over year in the last three months. So keep your eye on it, man. That number is out tomorrow. Uh, and, yeah, the Fed's going to be talking about whether they go 75 basis points. They're going to be meeting September 20th and 21st. I think that's next Tuesday and Wednesday. Yes, it is. Next Tuesday and Wednesday. And we're going to find out, but all eyes are going to be on that tomorrow, man. And I imagine today is going to be a dicey one coming into that number because it's pretty remarkable that you're looking at a headline number that's expected to be 8%. You're looking at a core number that's expected to rise. We have a Fed that right now, probability-wise, is baking in 75 basis points. Okay. Now, uh, we'll finish this conversation up, man. But we got the S&P sitting above 4,100. We were just at 3,900. Where those 200 points come from, folks? We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. We have the S&Ps, folks, up about 20 points, and I brought it up right now. We were just pushing 38.83. Uh, where did these 200 points come from, folks? I mean, at first it was beginning a little bit of a relief rally, but you're talking about, excuse me, yeah, you're talking about 5% from where we were on Wednesday morning, Thursday, and Friday. As we come into a CPI number that's supposed to show rising core CPI, as we come into a Fed meeting that's baking in a third 75 basis points hike. And the chairman could not be stronger right now with the words and the rhetoric he's using to say that we are going to hike until we see substantial information that and data that we are sure that we are over the hump. Okay, rising core CPI that's going to be now above six percent, six percent again. That's not what they're talking about, folks. Uh, so I don't know where the market comes to forty one hundred when you were just at thirty eight eighty three. We put this thing on a daily. Okay. Quite the sell-off from August 16th when you were pushing 43.27. You dive down to 38.84. We're now coming right into the 50%. If you're looking for the 618, talking about 50 points to the upside on the S&Ps of where that bounce could potentially go. Now, we got through the 382, and that 382, we are right in the big bar from August 26, folks. Okay, We got into that bar on Friday. And now you're at about a 50% of the pullback trading right now at 41.05 on those S&Ps. Speaking of Fibonacci's, folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, we got our man Larry Pesavento. He is doing a live trading webinar coming up a week from tomorrow, I believe. Let me get this. Yes, Tuesday, September 20th. So one week from tomorrow, Larry will be in there. Live trading, five hour strokes, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. I think he's done four or five of these. Always an outstanding uh, webinar. There'll be a bunch of great participants in there as well. We host these now at our Discord, which is a great interactive way to host these with the hosts and the subscribers and attendees. Larry will be in there for five hours. He'll be trading live. He'll be going over his rhetoric. There's no better way to do it than to watch it live, folks. You get a month of his Fibonacci newsletter. That's a $97 value. The total cost... Folks, it's $295, but immediately you gain a month of his newsletter, and that starts immediately. Larry puts out some outstanding comment, uh, commentary for Fibonacci 24-7, particularly over the weekend. 
He puts out updates 24-7, folks, which is why we say that. But over the weekend, he has a couple pretty in-depth reports. I think he sent out one update yesterday, four separate videos, uh, about five-minute videos. He talked about oil in one video. He talked about the S&P, the indices in one video. He talked about grains, if you're a grains trader, in one of the videos. Not to mention going over charts of many different futures markets, many different indices, uh, whether it's our indices or even over the globe, talking about the DAX. Etc. So you gain access to Fibonacci 24-7 right, right when you sign up for that. And we give you a month past the date of the actual event. So if you sign up right now, you're basically getting five weeks plus of Fibonacci 24-7. As that approaches, one week from tomorrow, check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. And we're going to talk a little bit of housing because I got three articles up here to talk about, man. Where's U.S. inflation heading? You want to know? Follow the rent, man. Shelter. I, we're all learning so much, folks, of all this data. Uh, shelter, one-third of the CPI. Did you know that? I know that now only because you better know that, man, because CPI is driving everything right now, and shelter is one-third of what goes into it. But you start to think about it, right? What does a consumer spend their money on? Well, geez, rent or your mortgage? That's a big factor of everything going on in your life. And we got rents and mortgages rising dramatically, and that is showing no pause. Now, mortgages, okay, showing pause, but what's happening? People can't buy a house right now. Rents are going up. Eventually, that should all work itself out. It doesn't go like that forever, man. You can't have nobody wanting to buy a house because they can't afford it, and rents just skyrocketing. But we are in especially interesting times right now, folks. We have a, a housing shortage of people, of houses for people that need them. At the same time as we have mortgage rates, at least for what I know, at pretty historic highs from my historic nature, and that's many people in the market as well. When you're talking about five and a half to six percent mortgages from where we've come over the last what 15 years, almost at least. Now, the good news is rental inflation may be close to topping out after advancing almost six percent in the 12 months through July. The bad news. It's going to take a while to settle back down to anything resembling pre-coronavirus norms. 6%, okay? If rent is persistent here with inflation, okay? Now, look at this. We get U.S. consumer prices, rent or shelter, and we have average hourly earnings, okay? You have U.S. consumer price index of rent shelter still dramatically on the rise here. And look at this chart. This chart goes back to 1991, folks. you got to go back to. All right, we're dealing with factors that this economy is just not accustomed to dealing with at all. Let's see. So the CPI out tomorrow expected to show core inflation that excludes it rising by 0.3% on the month. Now, we just went over year over year. That's going to push 6.1%. Rents have always been important in measures of inflation due to their outsized share in most household budgets. They compromise a little over 30% of the headline number and about 40% of the core number. Remarkable, right? You better know this if you're thinking about inflation and you're thinking about the data and you're thinking about the Fed, man. Uh, during the pandemic, as inflation has surged, other smaller components like used vehicles recorded such unprecedented prices, price increases that they too become major drivers of those measures. So in an attempt to get a better handle on the underlying inflation, policymakers have increasingly turned to a trimmed mean or a median indexes to get a sense of how broad-based inflationary pressures really are. You start playing with the data, folks, okay, and you're going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, but ultimately, they too end up being dominated by rent. That's in part because so much bigger than any other component. It's also because the so cost of shelter tends to be one of the most persistent, least volatile components, which means it rarely, if ever, ends up getting filtered out. You can't filter it out, folks. It's persistent. It's not that volatile. People are signing six-month leases. They're signing 12-month leases, okay? This is not like the cost of crude. This is not like the cost of a used vehicle that is determined by how many cars are on the lot that month. This isn't the cost of a new vehicle that's determined by how many chips you have to have the lines moving so you can produce brand new vehicles, okay? Huge shipping numbers doing big things. Uh, 
keep your eye on this one, man. You could go over and over and over. I think I made the point. Uh, for forecasters, that puts a hefty premium on understanding the drivers of and likely trajectory of rent inflation. You figure that one out, man. Uh, you'll know a lot about this market because not only that, right? If you figure out what's going to happen with rent, you're going to have to figure out what's going to happen on the real estate side. How deep is the pullback going to be? Is there going to be a pullback? It's just going to be a slowing of rising prices for real estate. There's a lot out there, but when you talk about rents being 40% of the core CPI, you talk about a number where people are signing leases over and over and over, um, and it's persistent, and it's really not that vol volatile because of the structures that people lock themselves into with contracts. That is going to be persistent, folks, and that is going to take some time. And the Fed's going to have to deal with that. So it's still, until rents come down, I mean, what's that mean? Do we need a little bit of a housing pullback at least to get out of this? Maybe what they, I mean, is that what the chairman's thinking? Could he be? He could be because that would really help. If you brought down real estate prices that really push rents to a lower level, that would have a dramatic effect. And it's something that might play out. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 23 points right now. That's more than half a percent in the positive. You see where we're sitting, about a 50% retracement of that current move. And boy, these are short-term trends, folks. That's only August 16th. We're not even a month out. And you're talking about an S&P that trades down 400 points and now up 200 points from then. Uh, mentioned, we've been talking about it. CPI tomorrow, PPI on Wednesday. A Fed meeting begins one week from tomorrow with a announcement the 21st yes which is a week from wednesday 2 p.m eastern time press conference to follow right now the market looking for about 75 basis points now getting back to the rent conversation real quick one final thing i want to bring up and these are just takes folks but you talk about it now this is one gentleman let's see who we're talking about here alan detmeister an economist at ubs securities okay and some of the analysts have been magnificently wrong folks i was listening to bloomberg this morning and they were just talking about the fed projection of where they saw their rate uh, at the end of this year in December they were looking for something like nine tenths of a percent is what they were looking for and meanwhile we're hiking 75 like like it's going out of style right now and we're only in September okay things can change dramatically the point but when you talk about rent okay and uh, this is an economist at UBS the consumer price index measure of rent inflation should follow, just like others have topped out earlier this week when they talk about inflation, okay? After surging in 2021, proxying, proxies using data on new lease inflation from companies like Zillow and Apartment List, and Bestford and my dad do a great show on Friday, so folks, Bestford has talked about that Zillow is really cornering even the rental market, which would make sense, right? Why not? Uh, this year and are now moderating, okay, the comp consumer price index measures of rental inflation should follow, though with a lag. This gentleman sees rental inflation climbing north of 7% early next year. And even by the end of 2024, it's going to remain elevated about 4.5%. That's just an opinion, folks, okay? But boy, if we're dealing with rental inflation that's 40% of the core, that's pushing 7% next year, and it's pushing 4.5% by the end of 2024, there is going to be inflation that is not transitory, to put it lightly. In many cases, you don't get the jump up to those market rates until the tenant moves out. And that could be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. It's going to take a few years to get back to pre-pandemic pace. Folks, if you've ever been a landlord, you understand it, okay? And uh, you probably understand it even if you haven't, okay? Because let's say someone's paying you $2,000 a month for a single family home, whatever it is, in a part of three bedroom, two, bed two bath apartment, two bedroom, one bath apartment, you're paying 1,500, whatever it is. Let's say someone's paying $2,000 a month, okay? You rent to that person, they're an outstanding tenant, they pay their rent every month and they treat your place with respect and you trust them, okay? The next year, especially when the pandemic's going on and rents are really flying, right? You say to yourself, man, this this piece of property I have is probably worth about $2,200 a month right now. Maybe it's worth $2,150. Maybe you put it up there for $2,195 and you take $2,100 or something like that, right? But what do you say? Normally, okay, my experience is, is that you really only force a rate increase on your tenant if you are actually willing to lose that tenant for that rate increase. And most times it's actually not worth it, man. When you think about, number one, if you have a good tenant, there's a tremendous amount of value in that, okay? Especially when it comes to just respecting your home, trusting them being in there, uh, whatever it is, treating your property with respect and paying your bills, probably most importantly. But let's just say you send a letter to your tenant. You say, uh, we're raising the rate to 2200 it's going up 10 percent and you say it's it's a completely fair price and you're right it is a fair price you're not you know um squeezing them in any way all you're doing is asking for market rate but what happens okay what happens is that what if they say i'm not doing it man i can't afford it i could afford 2000 i can't afford 2200 okay you're only talking about 200 dollars extra if you just miss one month of rent by that person moving out and moving back in, just taking a 30-day lull, that's one almost a full year that you would have made up in the extra rent. So you're risking that whole increase for a year just for that one month, and most times it takes you a little time to recycle a candidate um, to be a tenant there. So what's the point? The point is most times what I've done is 
I've really only raised them the next time a tenant comes in. I've had a tenant that's lived, I have a duplex, I had a tenant in there for uh, three or four years in the beginning, didn't raise the rent, raised it the next time a tenant came in, they were in there for a couple of years, didn't raise it, raised the tenant the next time to a market rate. That's how it's gonna play out, folks. And many times, you know, you're not gonna squeeze people, especially right now, if you don't wanna kick them out, uh, and so it's going to take some time for sure. All right, we got a caller. Let's jump to our man Jose in Lakeland. Jose, good morning, man. How's Monday going? Top of the morning, top of the morning. Uh, <clears throat> traffic is light, not too bad out here. Hey, nice. um, I just came from the supermarket. Uh, there's definitely inflation here. Marshmallows have tripled in price. What's going on with the marshmallow, man? You got to uh, talk to him, man. I it's an economic phrase. They call it the fluff another effect. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's crazy. A1 steak sauce, five and a half dollars. It's just ketchup, man. You know, I read something on toilet paper today. The toilet paper is through the roof because energy prices are uh, just dramatic, actually. How much energy gets used in producing toilet paper? Did not uh, aware of it. One company last year, they spent something like $400 million on their energy bu uh, budget. This year, they're approaching $2 billion, like the biggest one out there, because there's oh, the energy oh, I alone. I had no um, idea about that. I thought that would be the easiest. That uh, might get things very real, man. Produce, you start um, getting toilet hey, paper C prices through C the roof. CPI coming out tomorrow, correct? Correct. It should show that inflation is waning with gas prices down, no? Well, the analysts out there are saying that it's going to show about 8%, down from 85 for a headline number. Um, I'm not sure if you caught the beginning of the program, though. The interesting thing, you're talking about food prices, man. Even taking food and energy out, which is just so volatile right now in general, and I agree, and I think everybody does, man. Food is through the roof right now. You can't deny energy even pulling back is still pretty elevated. But the core number, Jose, is going to show an increase to 6.1%, man. And I just went over that rents are almost 40% of core CPI. So my head's trying to get over if rents are 40% of the core and core is actually rising, they think, from 59 to 6.1%. Where's the end of the road, man? Um, I don't know, but that's a little dicey right now because even if energy comes down and, listen, you go out, you know, once we get out, and it's not scary, but it's pretty intimidating when you think, if we have to start getting to where we're comping out against when crude was spiking to $130 a barrel just to get some reprieve on the CPI headline number, that's not going to help even the core number, though. So what happens if nine months from now, you know, the market's comparing itself to June crude prices and energy prices, right? And the CPI shows a, a decrease in the headline number year over year because of what we had. That's not going to help what you're talking about at the grocery store, man. It's not going to help rents that are 40% of the core number. So, yeah, it's going to show some inflation, man. And I don't know. I mean, we're in uncharted territory, man. I mean, that what I was just talking about with rents, I would keep my head around that for, for inflation because... That's going to persist, man. What do you think? What's the way, you know? Yeah, look at the perception is not 75 basis points, back down of 50 basis points in September. Here, hold on one Fed, second. Uh, hold on, Jose. Come back with us, all right? We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And we got markets continuing higher, folks. s and is now up 26 points. That's about two-thirds percent. NASDAQ 100, you're about eight-tenths percent. Right now, when you take a look at the Dow, you're talking about half a percent. The Russell, up about half a percent as well. We jump to crude, up a dollar right now at 87.85. You get the gold contract, up about $7. We jump around to a few currencies right now. Dollar index, Jose hung up too. We'll finish that conversation in a moment before we jump around on rents. Dollar index, continuing to pull back. Well, folks, don't be confused here, man, right? If the Fed is on a hiking cycle and they're going to have trouble taming inflation, then I would not expect any severe deep pullback in any way on the dollar index. Right now, you've backed off to 108.36. All you are is back to where we were August 26. Pretty sure everybody was pretty strong in the dollar on August 26. You did get up to 110.78. Uh, we do have some retracements of what's going on, but all we've seen, folks, is higher highs and higher lows in this dollar index. You jump over to the euro US dollar this morning, back above parity. But I talked about this last week, man. Pay attention to this. We are right at the upper boundary right now of the euro US dollar. You just got butt just above that level on a tail, okay? We put this thing on a five minute. And look at the pullback, man. We were up to almost 102, just like that. You're back to 101, man. And you see where, where that line is on the euro us dollar now interesting that we're at the top portion of that pound of that euro us dollar trend line or channel line and then you jump to the pound us dollar and look at that i was talking about it last week man you're actually bouncing off the bottom portion so what do you have you have when you compare the pound to the euro you have potentially greater pound strength versus the euro coming up. Now we've gotten quite a little boost. I was talking about this on Friday, man. Uh, we were at 115 on Friday action. You're pushing almost 117 as you catch a little bit of a pound bounce. Hasn't quite given back what the euro gave back this morning. You did give back some of it, but you saw the pullback we just had in the euro and we got to jump over to the yen this morning. Backing off a bit as well. We were up to almost 145. You put that thing on the daily, but same thing, man. Do not be confused by some of these pullbacks. Uh, Nothing compared to the moves that we've had and the trends that they are still intact in this morning. All right, jumping back to the housing real quick. So I was asking Jose, I mean, what do you think, right? What do you think is going to happen when you have rents persisting and you have them being 40% 40, 40 of core inflation? Uh, you get the headline number is going to come down a bit. But folks, headline's not going to save us right now if you got core persisting. It's not going to save us at all. You know, wages are not keeping up with where rents are. And you have a little bit of a disconnection right now, a dislocation potentially going on between the prices of houses that is pulling back potentially. Meanwhile, you have rents that could persistently rise over the next couple of years just to catch up with what's going on in terms of the prices for where they are actually living. 
Now, a couple different articles I had up here as well. New York City housing, okay, pulling back a bit from where they were. The number of properties for sale. Now, this article is from September 7th, okay, but I'm jumping around a bit because this is kind of what we're talking about this morning. We get CPI tomorrow. And again, even the headline number, okay, shelter is one third of. The core number, it's almost four tenths. Uh, number of properties for sale under 500,000 that entered contract in June, 29% less than the average number of transactions for that same period in the decade leading up to the pandemic. When you go to 500,000 to a million, you're talking about 15% less, okay? You talk about the world's hottest markets. Now, this one out yesterday, all right? I'm just going to scroll down to some of these markets. Sydney, Auckland, New Zealand, Stockholm, Toronto, right? Toronto. Just, I mean, we've been hearing some tough stories of Toronto, man, and they are just edging lower. Whereas, look at the pullbacks we got in Sydney, Auckland, Stockholm, man. Now, this is basing at 2020 prices, okay? So, they're still all up almost 20% from where they were in 2020. But, boy, Auckland was pushing 40-plus percent, and you had everything else pushing 30% at one point. Toronto got up to 50% at one point. Now, here's what I found so interesting about this article, though. Talking about interest rate volatility, exposure, variable risk. How exposed borrowers are to rising rates varies notably by country. In the US, for instance, most buyers rely on fixed rate home loans for as long as 30 years. Adjustable rate mortgages represented on average about 7% of conventional loans in the past five years. Not sure who was locking in an adjustable rate mortgage as rates were where they were over the last five years, but that's the market. Maybe they weren't going to hold it for an extended period of time and they were just flipping it. Maybe there were other things going on. Uh, if they're still holding that, that was a mistake. By contrast, other nations commonly have loans fixed for as little as a year or variable rate mortgages that move closely in line with official interest rates. We've seen how that can go bad in the U.S. before. You're not going to believe some of these charts. Maybe you are and you know them. Australia, Spain, the UK, and Canada had the highest concentration of variable rate loans as a share of new originations in 2020. Now, these are 2020 loans, folks. Do you remember what was happening with interest rates in 2020? Okay. They were crashing as the pandemic spread in 2020 especially the later half of the year, right? Before we had quite come out of things. Uh, Australia, 93% of their loans are variable rate. They're in big trouble, folks, okay? Spain, 52%. The UK, 42%. Canada, 24%. The US, 1%. France, 1%. Thank goodness um, for current owners of homes that they're gonna be at that level because New Zealand at 55%, I mean, look at this. So other countries have a large portion of mortgages resetting imminently. They reset. In New Zealand, for instance, 55% of the outstanding value of residential mortgages is either on a floating rate or it's on a fixed rate that needs to be renewed in the year July 2023. That ain't fixed, folks, if it's fixed for less than a year. Uh, New Zealand, where prices rose close to 30% in 2021, is something of a poster child of the pandemic housing boom. The central bank has hiked interest rates seven times in the past 10 months, and housing prices were down 11% in July from their peak in November. Uh, yeah, and it's going to spread, man, when you talk about those types of interest rates in pretty dramatic fashion, hitting that market. Uh, we're kicking things off with a little real estate, but boy, if you solve what's going to happen with interest rates impacting real estate, that impacting home ownership, how that plays out to the rental dynamic going on, because if people are unable to buy houses, folks, and they are still forced into renting, and those rental prices are resetting over the next year or two, and there's enough demand to support the prices that they are coming to market with, and you still have an inflationary tendency pushing 7% next year and even 4.5% by the end of 2024. I don't know where the Fed goes then, but I haven't heard anybody talking about that. I haven't. Have as you know, where where are um, where's the analysis? And I'm sure it's been out there in some capacity, but I haven't seen it that talks about how we get inflation back down to any reasonable level when you have rents going to be contributing such a huge factor in things, and that estimate could potentially be rising almost 5% still through 2024. 
It's wild stuff, man, in a big way. We jump around, folks. Let's check out some, some of the fang stocks are kicking off the week. We got Amazon up about uh, 1% this morning, kicks things off. Big dog Apple after their week last week, they're up 2%. There's a pop for you to 160.59. Tesla shares this morning up about 1.5%. We jump over to Google shares. Google barely in the positive by about 10 cents this morning. We jump to Microsoft shares up about half a percent as well. Let's see how some of those growth stocks are faring. ARC up about 1.6%. That thing is just building a base potentially on the bottom, chopping around the 40s. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. s and is up 33 points. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets continuing to drift higher. Looking at S&P, almost a full percentage in the positive right now, trading up 37 points at 41.22. NASDAQ 100, you're a similar 9 tenths percent in the green right now, 12,783. And yeah, the Dow now up 7 tenths, pushing 227 percent. Uh, excuse me, 227 percent, 227 points in the higher. Let's jump around to some of the banks this morning with J.P. Morgan up about 1.7 percent this morning. Bank of America. We're up 1.5%. We jump to some of the airlines. Delta up 1.8%. Everything's getting a lift, man. Really interesting. 2.6% for Americans. Uh, Southwest up 1.6%. Cruise ships up a couple percent. Now, check out Carnival, man. If you're looking for a trade, folks, this might be one. 
Uh, you get back within this channel line. You're towards the bottom line of that. You know, keep in mind, though, if you are playing Carnival and you are buying Carnival, you could wake up any day and there could be a shock to that stock that says they can't support the debt and they might go out of business. And you could just see a dramatic drop off. Maybe you trade it with options to get some defined risk of some capacity. Uh, even if you catch a bounce to the upside of this channel line, you're talking about 14, 15, 16 bucks on Carnival. Let's check to some of the chip stocks, the video shares. This thing's been just hammered, man. Up two tenths percent, trading at 144.24. AMD shares, yeah, down as well, down about seven tenths this percent this morning. We jump back to Apple shares. Look at this, man. Apple, quite a pop, up 2.4 percent. Look at this acceleration. Apple just traded up two dollars from the open. Apple just gained 32 billion dollars in market cap uh, in the last 26 minutes as Apple accelerates higher. This whole, yeah, NASDAQ 100, now more than 1% in the positive. It's going to be an interesting one, folks. Do we hold this? Do we hold it into tomorrow's number? Going to be some dicey action tomorrow. Uh, I bet we're going with 75 basis points next week, man. And I bet even if we come pretty close in line, the numbers they're looking for, the reason why we spent so much time on it today, folks, try and remember the numbers that we're looking for and try and remember how hard it's going to be to get to anything resembling normal CPI. And until it's, you know, something with conviction, the conversation is not going to end, and the chairman's going to be out there. And the S&Ps are sitting pretty relatively well at 41.26, coming into potentially that third 75 basis point hike. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman, he's back live. Live programming all day at TFNM. Basil's up next. Have a great Monday, everybody.